This is the most comprehensive review of the NMN research that I've ever done to answer the question, will NMN supplements radically improve our health, or is it just hype? And I think most of you will be surprised at the conclusion at the end. So, NMN stands for nicotinamide mononucleotide, and it's a form of vitamin B3. And there's a lot of excitement about the potential that NMN may have on human health because of papers such as this one in 2016, where they gave NMN to mice over a 12-month period and compared it to placebo. And the mice who took NMN, they were protected against the age-associated physiological declines, so they had enhanced energy metabolism, greater physical activity, and improved insulin sensitivity. So the theory goes that if we take NMN or other forms of vitamin B3, we can support our NAD levels, and NAD is crucial to our metabolism. It influences many key cellular functions, including DNA repair, cellular senescence, and immune cell function. The trouble is, many research papers they postulate that aging is associated with a gradual decline in NAD levels, and this decline is linked to numerous age-associated diseases, including cognitive decline, cancer, metabolic disease, and frailty. So it's hoped that many of these age-associated diseases will be slowed down or even reversed by restoring NAD. That's the overall idea, but it raises even more questions. Do NAD levels actually go down as we age? Does this happen in all tissues? Is NMN directly absorbed, and does it support NAD levels in all tissues? And what do the current human clinical trials show? Because here's the thing. In February 2022, a paper was published that took muscle biopsies and compared them between young and old patients. What they found is that older adults who didn't exercise, they had lower levels of muscle NAD. But the older adults who did regularly exercise, they had NAD levels roughly the same compared to younger people. So it's not not obvious that NAD levels decline as we age. It might be that through a great lifestyle, including a good diet and regular exercise, we can maintain youthful NAD levels without supplements. Particularly because in our cells, there's the salvage pathway. So as our NAD is used up for all of those different chemical reactions related to our metabolism, that used up NAD can then be recycled. So that's the first important point. The second one is, are NMN supplements actually absorbed and can they help rebuild NAD? Now, in the literature, there's a lot of controversy, where a fascinating twist has recently been added to this story, suggesting that orally administered nicotinamide riboside, as well as NMN, will almost be fully transformed into nicotinic acid by the gut microbiome. So let's back up for a second. There are numerous different forms of vitamin B3. So we've got NR, NMN, nicotinamide, and nicotinic acid, or niacin. And multiple papers have now suggested that if you take NMN supplements or NR supplements, the first converted into nicotinic acid before they absorbed into the body. But this is still extremely controversial. If the NR and NMN supplements were converted into nicotinic acid, we would expect to see patients develop flushing, because that's one of the side effects of taking nicotinic acid. But this doesn't happen with NMN or NR, even at doses four to six-fold higher. So there's still a lot of unanswered questions about how exactly NMN and NR supplements are absorbed into the human body and reach our cells. It gets even murkier when we look at this 2018 paper, where they isotopically labeled NMN and NR to see exactly how these supplements are absorbed. What they found is that both of these supplements are significantly broken down before they reach our bloodstream. To sum up so far then, it's not obvious that NAD levels decline as we age, and it's not obvious that NMN or NR supplements are directly absorbed by the body. But moving on to the next point, regardless if NMN is first broken down into a different molecule, does it overall still result in greater NAD levels? Well, we've got overwhelming human evidence that yes, NMN supplements, they do boost blood NAD. But it's not so much blood NAD that that we're interested in. What we want to see is will these supplements increase muscle NAD or the NAD levels in other tissues in the body? And unfortunately, to my knowledge, we don't have any NMN human studies to answer this question, so we don't know whether NMN supplements will boost muscle NAD. But we do have evidence from an NR or nicotinamide riboside human study, where over a 12-week period, the muscle NAD levels remained unchanged, which is a very disappointing finding, but it's what we would expect if NR and NMN supplements are first broken down before they reach the bloodstream and before they can reach our muscles. And it may explain why these supplements have failed to provide any major effect in skeletal muscle metabolism in the different clinical trials performed to this date on healthy, obese, or elderly patients. To make sure that we're still all on the same page, it's not obvious that as we age,
age, our NAD levels decline. It's not obvious that NMN or NR is directly absorbed into the body, and it's unlikely that these supplements directly reach our muscle or boost muscle NAD. Last year, there were a lot of NMN human clinical studies that were published, and I reviewed each one on my channel as they came out. And if you just read the abstracts, you'd think that NMN was God's gift to the world. But as I went through in the separate videos, these studies are small and many of them have got serious methodological issues. So it makes drawing any definitive conclusions difficult. There's also no convincing evidence for improvements in muscle performance. But if we expand our scope and look at research on other forms of vitamin B3, there are some very interesting findings. In multiple clinical studies, vitamin B3 has been shown to improve signs of aging, such as fine lines and wrinkles, and it's now recognized in the clinical guidelines for its skin anti-aging effect. And given that NAD is central to our metabolism, we want to try and support it during times of stress. For example, when vitamin B3 was given to COVID patients alongside other supplements, the recovery time was a whopping three days faster. We can also see that for patients with damaged mitochondria, which are the powerhouses of our cells, vitamin B3 improved muscle strength and helped grow new mitochondria. Plus, in a large phase 3 study of nicotinamide, which is also a form of vitamin B3, we can see that it reduced reduced the rates of new non-melanoma skin cancers in high-risk patients. And just on the point of cancers, because there's a lot of confusion about this on social media, it's highly likely, based on that paper that we've just gone through, that vitamin B3 is protective against new cancers. But there is a chance that vitamin B3 may help fuel existing cancer growth. Coming back to NMN, it's highly likely that NMN is not directly absorbed by the body. Instead, it's likely that it's broken down first into nicotinamide and nicotinic acid acid, all of which are forms of vitamin B3. And when we look at the human data on vitamin B3, there seems to be tangible benefits, and it's why vitamin B3 is the only vitamin that I mega dose. So subscribers of this channel might think that I'm against vitamin B3, because whenever a new paper comes out, generally I tear it down because of the methodological issues. But I'm actually very optimistic about the role that it will have in human health span. And again, this is why it's the only vitamin that I mega dose. And on the point of dosage, the recommended daily intake for vitamin B3 is 16 milligrams. And personally, I take 50 milligrams of nicotinic acid or niacin, so just over three times the recommended daily intake. And I use nicotinic acid because it's far cheaper compared to NMN or NR. And again, NMN or NR, they're most likely broken down into nicotinic acid anyway. Supplement companies who sell NMN, they generally sell it at a dose of one gram, which is just over 60 times the recommended daily intake. So again, your health, your decision, but that's not the dosage that I take. The other complicating factor is that the FDA recently banned NMN supplements because of a company called Metro Biotech, which Dr. David Sinclair co-founded. They've developed their own proprietary blend of NMN called MIB626. Now, the supplement companies are currently negotiating with the FDA, and while this process is ongoing, many of them are still selling NMN. If you do choose to buy NMN, I highly recommend that you choose a brand that's regularly third-party tested for purity. For example, I've previously done a review of some of the NMN brands sold on Amazon, and many of them don't have any NMN in their product at all. The three most recognized brands for pure NMN is Renew by Science, Pro Health, and Do Not Age. But if you're interested in a summary of all of the things that you can do to lead a healthy, long life, make sure to check out this video here. A massive thank you in particular to donotage.org for their $10,000 donation to my rapamycin study. They are a health research organization, and to benefit from their ingredients as well as a 10% discount code, check out the pinned comment.